Want to swim further without getting tired? Yeah, of course you do. Well, there are several areas that need to be addressed, and guess what? We've got them all covered right here. Spending more time on your feet helps for endurance running. So spending more time in the water is, in theory, going to help with your swimming. Although, sadly, spending more time floating about in a spa isn't going to cut it. You do need to actually be swimming. So it's a good idea to try and start to increase the number of swims you can do in a week. If you're already struggling, try not to increase the distance. Instead, just try to see if you can organize a schedule that means you can actually go to the pool more often and swim a shorter distance but more regularly. So say at the moment you're doing two lots of an hour in the pool per week. Could you actually change that to just 45 minute sessions, but make it three? Then you can build it up to four. And once you're comfortable doing that, you can then start to increase those back to the hour in duration. And this makes it more manageable and it's gonna allow your body to adapt and get stronger and just basically naturally start to increase that stamina. Now, I understand that if you are struggling with your stamina in swimming, you're probably reluctant to actually do more of it because it's just not that enjoyable. It is one of those things, though, that battling through it now, it will start to increase. So just keep it small so hopefully you can get that enjoyment factor. And you'll be pleased to know there are plenty of other areas that we can address that are actually going to help with your stamina. Sticking with increasing the amount of time you can spend in the pool and the amount of lengths that you can swim, so to look at how we can actually make that possible, and that's where swim aids come in. You can use aids just to make swimming easier. Uh, yes, they can help your stroke, but there's certain ones that can just make you able to swim for a little bit longer and potentially swim a bit further. And you've got two options here that can really help with your body position in the water and help with your hips. And that's a neoprene swim shorts or a pool boy. It's just going to help you stay more buoyant. And as a result, you won't get so tired. The pool boy in particular, because that's going to eliminate any leg kick. So you'll find that if that's something you struggle with, you'll get less tired using it. Pool Boy is also great because you can use it for part of the session quite easily because you can simply just take it out and leave it on the pool side. It just sits in between your legs. Neoprene shorts are great if you maybe want them for a whole session because they do allow you to still kick your legs lightly, but they're going to help with that body position at the same time. They do, however, take a little bit longer to take on and off, so it's probably more for a chunk of the session. So those aids are going to help you swim further with less effort, but you could also look at aids that are going to help you swim a little bit quicker and therefore cover more distance for the same amount of effort. So you take fins, for example, you're going to get more propulsion out of each kick if you use fins. Hand paddles do a similar job, although they will maybe add a little bit of fatigue because they're going to be testing your strength, but more on that later on. If you struggle with timing your breathing and getting your head moving at the right time, you could try using a snorkel. Now, all of these aids are great, but just bear in mind that it's not a good idea to become reliant on them. So use them for particular sessions or part of sessions, but make sure you still include plenty of normal stroke as well. Slow it down. Not all of your swimming needs to be at a really intense pace. And just like training for any sport, you need to work in different zones. However, we're trying to build our stamina and endurance. So you need to spend the majority of your time working at an aerobic level. So it should feel really comfortable. A zone two, around a three or four out of 10 is the correct intensity. Now, if you do struggle to keep your swimming at that low intensity, maybe it's your legs that are tiring you out. Well, you can use aids like we've already mentioned and just by helping your body position, you might find that the effort level is that much easier. And also eliminating your legs can reduce the need for oxygen because the large muscles in your legs will require quite a lot. And that can just mean you're not going to be so out of breath and just everything feels a little bit easier. Now, relevant of your swimming goals, you need to build that aerobic capacity first, but you still need to include some tempo work, some sprints to get your arms moving, getting yourself used to swimming faster, and a lot of technique and drill work. But those are sprinkled on top of this base. And there's nothing wrong in just slowing down that base. You might be worried of, oh, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but I'm swimming slower. But initially, swimming slower will make things feel easier. You'll hopefully enjoy it a bit more, and you might be able to stay in longer and you'll still be covering the same distance. Once you get used to that, you can then start to increase that base pace ever so slightly. It goes without saying that once you've got 
better technique, you'll find swimming easier and you'll be able to maintain your stroke for that much longer. Now, working on your technique and focusing on certain drills can sometimes feel a little boring and maybe not even that effective. And that's because changes don't happen overnight. However, really making sure you do spend time working on these aspects of your stroke will have a far greater effect on your swimming efficiency overall than spending hours of steady swimming. So it's worth concentrating on areas such as the catch of your swim, the underwater pull and the rotations. Once you've got those nailed, you'll find yourself slipping through the water with ease. This is at the other end of the spectrum. Strength is a completely different aspect, but if you can combine it with strength, well, you're gonna be sorted. Now, endurance does require a certain amount of strength, and when it comes to swimming, it's a very repetitive movement that's working your arms, your shoulders, your neck, and your core to quite an extent. So you need to think about ways of strengthening this. Obviously, you can do this within swimming, so isolating your arms and just doing work with a pool boy between your legs is going to work your upper body quite a lot, as is paddles. That's really gonna work on strength. You'll find that you might need to use paddles for some of it, because your arms will get really quite tired. But you can also, if you're feeling quite brave, stick a band around your ankles. And this is a really intense upper body workout, but it is kept more for the advanced swimmers. And beyond that, look outside of the pool. There is nothing wrong with going to the gym. In actual fact, top level swimmers and all level swimmers can really complement their swimming program by working specifically in the gym. So if you are gonna go in there, obviously focus on upper body exercises and things that will correlate really nicely to swimming, such as lat pull down. That's a perfect one. Tricep extension. Basically, if you think of the movement of the stroke, those are going to really focus on that area. And don't forget the core. It's essential, especially when you start to get tired in swimming, maintaining a strong core is gonna help keep that body position Breathing is often the biggest limiting factor when it comes to swimming stamina. Not the act of just getting the air into your lungs, but trying to work out the timing, the coordination, and being able to make sure your head is clear of the water. So there's a few aspects that you need to focus on here. One of those is the timing, like I mentioned. So making sure that you're turning your head at the correct time as your arm is coming over the water. You don't need to actually move your head very far. Also, body rotation. So if you're moving your whole body, you'll find you won't actually need to move your head very much. And it's the head movement that will tire you. You see so many people lifting their head up really high because you want to get more oxygen in, but it's just actually going to work to tire you out more because your hips are going to sink, you're going to have to kick your legs harder, and then as a result, you're going to want to get more oxygen. So it's kind of a vicious circle. So go back to those drills that are going to focus on your rotation, on your timing, and just work on turning your head a small amount. And you'll find that straight away, swimming is going to seem much easier and you'll be able to go further. And that is the aim that we're talking about today. So hopefully, all of these points together, you work on all of them, even one or two of them, and you will find your swimming stamina starts to improve. Well, good luck with your work. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it. Remember, we're on social media. You can check us out there, and you can also subscribe here on YouTube.